Hey ladies, it's Jen Mac, Lady of the I am finding you pulling yourself to your ideal. because it gives me that boost of confidence but it also is like yeah that's it makes the picture even clearer so I want to share something with you um, that is a way is stuff that I believe that I've been you know teaching you guys all along but at the same time learning it in a different way I've been telling you about like this two two trains of thought right there's this this thinking that no, I don't want to do that and it's, it's too hard and I should just relax or I should just watch TV or I don't want to, you know, do this new thing. It's that part of your mind that keeps you comfortable and keeps you stuck in that, that space. Things are not. And it is in this comfort zone where we stay stuck. But let me give you this new explanation to that. That is your body's mind. Now just try to separate that for a second. Your body has a mind that wants to keep you in um, a constant state of comfort for safety, to keep your physical body alive. If you go over there, you could die. If you do this, you could die. If you get on stage, you could be laughed at and ultimately die. If you go on this trip, if you go on this date, if you step into this relationship, if you take that job, we always have all these fears. Well, those fears come from the mind that's attached to our body. Now, again, think of it as like a separation, but don't think of it as the physical, like your brain. Your brain is the, it's the, the computer housing, let's say. So like your actual laptop, but it's not the software. The software is the, the body's mind, okay? And now think of this other part, this other mind, that is the one that is pulling you forward. That is where you sift through the world, through your experiences, and you say things like, you know, I think I could have a better relationship. Is this all there is? Could I make more money? Could I have a better job? Could I have um, more friends or more life experiences that are amazing, right? And that's the expansion part of you, the expansive, set uh, of thinking that moves you along the line of constantly seeking expansion. That's the soul. That's the spirit. So when we are dealing with these two, I want to say, I will say like two trains of thought. They're almost two characters. The, the safety one of you, which is your physical body that is keeping you here in this space, like this circle. Okay. Picture a circle on the ground with this physical body in it and this mind that says, no, I want to stay in this physical body, in my recliner, with my ho-hos, and watching Netflix, okay? Then there's this other part of you that's in the circle with your physical body that's more of a spiritual sense with a thought that says, I want to move outside of the circle. I want to get healthier and stronger. I want to do new things. I want to experience different things. I want to have a, a solid relationship. I want to have a loving um relationship with my husband or my wife or my partner. I want to have a great job. I want to make more money, whatever the, the things are that, that you want to experience. So with these two sets, with these two parts of your brain, these two characters, let's say, I can totally visualize this and hopefully you do too. You have this constant battle. One of them is going to win. And I ask you, which one do you want to win? Which one do you want to have the authority over your overall life experience? Now, you have to have a combination of both, right? You, you should have a combination of safety so you don't make big, bold, risky moves that, that risk your health, 
your happiness, your well-being, your financials, you know, stuff like that. You don't want to have so much on one side or the other. If you have all of your mind, you don't get to experience the joys and excitement of life. If you have all of your soul, then sometimes you might risk so much that you get hurt or unhealthy or something else might happen that risks your life, your physical being. So you have to have a balance between both. But I still think, my personal opinion is that one of them should have a little bit more authority than the other one. So how do we do that? Well, we've been given a set of what I, the old term, I don't think it's, I hardly ever hear it used anymore. And every time I hear this term used, it's in my old early 1900s uh, personal development books or mind mastery books that I read, is we have a set of what's called faculties. So this is your perspective, your perception, concentration, focus, imagination, visualization skills. It's all these different groups of ways to think and visualize and the way that we see our world, whether through our physical eyes, our mind's eye, our feelings, emotions, all of these are what is an old term is called our faculties. And I like using that term, it makes me feel smart, but <laughs> I like using that term. And um, I use that term often, so I just want you to understand what I'm saying when I say that word. So anyway, so we've been given a set of faculties, these different ways to think about things. And if we spend more time thinking about how we think, we will start to change our lives. We will start to change what we, we think is the solid state of our personality. So I could say, well, I'm just a really intense person. Well, I'm a really intense person is a belief. I can turn into a very calm and kind and, and um, quiet or passive type person by changing my beliefs about who I am. But if I identify, meaning that I bring it into my being and say, I am a blank, then I'm identifying with a certain personality trait, let's say. And then that gets to be what we could then say is a permanent state of being. I'm an anxious person. I have depression. I am old. I am a smoker. I am an angry person. I, whatever, okay? When you put the word I, in front of one of those types of words that describe you, you then move into an identifying perspective that seems permanent, thus unchangeable. And I disagree with that. There were times where long time ago, I would say I'm just a negative person. <laughs> and it's so funny and ironic when I look at myself you know, 25, 30 years later, and I'm like, I'm not a negative person anymore. Do I still sometimes struggle with negative thoughts creeping in? Yes, that's when I'm not being present and I'm getting triggered or I'm being reactive to my environment. And when I do that, then I'm triggered to an old school programming. So this physical state of me, this physical body, um, that character that I was telling you about, is triggered, thus old program starts to surface. So like using a computer that has like a glitch in it, when you hit a certain button or a certain series of buttons or a sequence, then all of a sudden this one thing happens, okay? So that can be you. We, if we are just reacting to our environment, we are in the physical mind, that character that's the physical being instead of the spiritual mind which is the one who's always seeking expansion. So the physical mind, and again, I'm not talking about the physical brain, I'm talking about that character. I should figure out a name for that character so it makes it clear, but hopefully you, you know what I'm saying. So the physical mind wants to keep us safe, wants to keep us here in the circle with our, with our, with our um, what do you call it, our recliner and our ho-hos and our Netflix. And always seeking comfort, which is why it's so, so difficult to get up at four o'clock in the morning to go and work out. Your body's like, oh, but the bed is so warm. Working out seems so daunting and so far away. The gym is so far away. It's cold outside. I'm really tired. I didn't sleep very well. And then the mind moves into the space of creating reasons, also deemed excuses, of why I shouldn't go do that thing. I didn't sleep well last night. I deserve a rest. I should just relax. I deserve a little peace and quiet. I had a hard day yesterday. I should eat this donut. 
I just, you know, there's so much going on. I'm so overwhelmed. I really should just watch TV some more, okay? And just relax. The body is always seeking that. Now, with these faculties that you've been giving, there's one in particular that I find to be extremely, extremely, not only powerful, but fun to use. And that is your imagination. Because your physical body is running this software programming in the background. And when we say things like, I just have, I'm an anxious person, I have anxiety, I am a depressed person, I'm negative, I'm overweight, I'm unhealthy, I'm a smoker. All of these things is just past programming. Things that you started to say to yourself. Let me ask you this. When you, now I'm not a smoker, though I do love an occasional cigar. Um, but when you first, if you're a smoker or take any habit, you eat cookies, uh, whatever your, let's say some sort of a food or maybe an unhealthy habit. When you eat your first cookie, you smoke your first cigarette, you drink your first beer, you don't immediately call yourself that thing. You don't say, I'm a drinker after you had your first beer, or I'm a smoker after you've had your first cigarette. So how many times do you have to do the activity before you identify with it? Five? Five hundred? I would say a lot. I would say a lot of times, right? So now, if you want to change that thing, first of all, stop saying that you're the thing. Stop, if, let's say you want to stop smoking. Stop saying that you're a smoker because you identify with it in that belief of that identification. You are making it feel like it's permanent. But the only reason it's permanent is this, because you keep saying it. Okay? So take that in for a second. Think of the words that you say. If you get out a sheet of paper, which you should have a binder right now that's three inches thick of all kinds of paper, because I swear every time I do a podcast, I'm telling you guys to get a piece of paper out. But get out a piece of paper, get out your journal, and you can do this. You can pause this podcast and you can, you can do this and write your name at the top of the paper. And then I want you to write all of those things that you identify with. I have anxiety. Um, I'm depressed. I'm excited, I'm a sexy person, I'm overweight, I'm unhealthy, I have heart disease, I have diabetes, I'm a smoker. I want you to write as an exhaustive list of all of the things that you identify with. And pause this thing, set your timer for 10 minutes, and write this list. Hopefully you wrote the list and you're coming back to the podcast now. Unless you're driving or you're at work. But anyway, um, so now that you have this list, I want you to go down the list, and these can be positive things or things that you see as negative things. Like I could say, I'm just an angry person, okay? You know, anger is, a, is an emotion that hits me quickly um, over really dumb things, but that's me reacting to my environment. I grew up in an angry household. It was just a behavior that I picked up. But if I start, if I look at my list and I say, um, I'm a fun person, I'm funny, I'm a good parent, I'm a good partner, I'm a great speaker, um, I'm an angry person, okay? So let's say I wrote those things down. Which one of those things do I want to change? Any of them? I want to change that I'm an angry person. I want it to be something different. I want it to be something nicer because anger, though sometimes it motivates me, it can be a very impulsive um, react, reaction or reactionary emotion that sometimes affects my relationships, as you might know firsthand or experience even with other people. It doesn't make my relationships closer, let's just say that. So now if that's the case and I want to change this thing, I need to figure out, and this is where we're going to use our faculties here in a moment, because in my, my physical mind, it says, well, yeah, of course you're angry because this, this, and this happened. Anybody would be angry under those circumstances. It's okay. Let's go drink a beer. Now, I don't normally drink a beer. Try to go with me a little bit. This is some of this. I feel like it's stand-up comedy. Um, I, don't, I don't drink beer. But anyway, so, so anyway, um, but that's kind of what my body is saying. My physical body says, no, it's okay. Even though it's an uncomfortable emotion, even though I know logically that it sometimes can negatively impact my relationships, even though I know it's not healthy, my mind still wants to stay in that space because of what? Because it's prediction. And prediction is safe. If I start traveling down a different road 
and start reacting differently, my body's like, whoa, 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 we don't understand this, like <laughs> does not compute. This is different. When I hit the B key on my keyboard, the letter B should show up on my screen, right? We want that prediction. So think of it as like that's kind of the hardware that your, your physical mind is producing. So we want some of those things, don't get me wrong, but we want some of those things. But when I want to change something like um, anger or depression or anxiety or that I'm overweight or that I'm a smoker, anything, we first have to understand and it has to show up in our conscious mind that says, hey, here's this thing. And I have to be open to the idea that something else can be in its place. I have to be open to the idea that this thing, whatever it is I'm identifying with, is not permanent. It's not permanent. Now, there are things in this physical world that are somewhat permanent, though I do feel like they can change, is our physical body. I can't really change the size of my nose. I can't really change how my ears look on my head, right? I can't, I can't change my height so much unless I lose a body part that makes me shorter, right? Or, okay, do you understand? So these are things, emotional things, or things that are a part of our personality that we think are permanent, but understanding that, and I'm about to get to it, is how it can be not permanent. So if there's something on your list that you want to change, I want you to look at that thing and say, this is not permanent. This can be changed. So when I look at I'm an angry person on my list, I can't just look at it and say, yeah, well, that's I am, Jen. You don't understand. I grew up in an angry household. I grew up where there was a lot of verbal abuse. Sometimes there was physical abuse when I was really, really young. I have a brother who's annoying. I have a mom who's dominating. My mom was divorced, raising two young kids. It was holy moly and this and this and that and that. Well, that all I'm doing is justifying and taking a stand of why I need that belief to stay that belief, making it permanent or seemingly permanent. So the first thing is to look at that and go, you know what? I want to change that. What if, what if you just ask that question, what if this could be changed? What if I could identify with something different? What if I could identify with being Calm, but firm. That feels better than anger, doesn't it? Calm, but firm. Huh, okay. Now, the next step after you are open, open to the idea, curious that it could be different, a little bit excited or maybe hopeful that this could be a change for me. Could I, in fact, change this thing? You just have to be open. And that allows the ideas, it allows the resources to come to you that allow this change to happen. So now you're open and you have this curiosity that says, you know what, maybe, maybe this could be different. Maybe, maybe I could be calm but firm. Just come up with something different. If I'm not a smoker, what am I? I'm a healthy person or whatever. Ask yourself that. If I'm not a smoker, what am I? If I'm not angry, what am I? Because maybe I have to be angry to gain authority or control. And if I lose control, then that's an unsafe position. Then my physical mind goes, wait, we don't, we don't do unsafe. So we have to be angry because we have to maintain control. There's a belief under there, but we're, we're traveling a different road right now. So now you have something else that you can look at. Now you say, well, if I didn't have to be angry, if I wasn't angry, what would I be? I'm going to say calm, but firm. That's what showed up for me just now. So if I'm calm, but firm, what does that look like? And take a scenario in your mind. This is where we start to use your imagination first. Start to use your imagination. And then in your mind, you, you, take, um, you create the scenario that typically makes you angry. And let's say it's, well, it's, it's when my kids leave messes in the kitchen. It makes me really angry. Okay? So now I have this scenario. And I'm looking at this scenario and I want to just feel the anger at the moment. So I'm gonna look at the scenario, I'm gonna go into the kitchen in my mind, in my imagination, I'm gonna go into the kitchen, I'm gonna see this big horrendous mess, and I'm going to react to it how I would normally react, how my normal programming reacts to that scenario. 
Whatever the belief is, doesn't matter. What is the scenario? And, and how do I react? And then feel into the reaction. Then I want you to say, it's okay. This is okay. I welcome this emotion. Now just go with me for a second. I welcome this emotion. You're not confronting the emotion. Remember, when we, when we confront something, what usually happens? That thing usually defends itself, right? If I confront an animal, it's going to defend itself. When I confront a person, it's going to defend itself. When I confront an emotion that's in my body, it's going to defend itself. I don't want this to lock into my programming any deeper. I'm tired of feeling angry and I want to feel calm and firm. So if I have to be firm, I can be, but I'm going to be calm. I'm going to be collected, whatever my words are, but that's what showed up for me. <clears throat> so now I take this scenario and I create this um, emotion and now I'm feeling anger and I'm just going to sit with the anger for a second. I'm going to be okay with it. I'm not going to get up and drink it away or eat it away or sex it away or do anything like that. I'm just going to sit with it. I'm going to welcome it. It's okay. And in my mind, I'm going to go through all the things and all the emotions that I need to. Even if in my mind I'm throwing things and cramming the dishes and slamming the dishes or yelling at the kids or doing whatever, slamming doors, whatever I'm doing, you're safe in this space in your mind to go through this whole scenario welcoming this emotion. Don't make excuses. Don't feed the story. Just feel into it. See the story as it unfolds. Go through the whole thing. Okay? And be curious and be welcoming. Don't push the emotion away. So feel into it. Then, once the emotion has subsided just a little bit, now I want you to say, hmm, I wonder how else I could handle that. How else could I deal with this that might feel just a little bit better and have a greater impact on those around me? How else can I feel that might just feel a little, or how else can I handle that that might feel a little bit better and have a greater impact on those around me? And when you ask this and you ask it in this way, you're almost sneaking up on the physical body instead of going, hey, I don't want to feel this way anymore. You suck. You're making my relationship suck. You're making my life painful. I hate you so much. You're not going to get, you're not going to get the same effect. So how can I handle that a little bit better, a little bit better, that feels a little bit better and has a greater impact? If you ask th that way and you ask that question, then it is a little bit nicer than the defense. You know, just think about your teenage, your teenage son or daughter. Hey, why don't you get your butt back in there and clean your bedroom? They're probably not going to do it. <laughs> They're probably going to resist that tone. They're not going to have the same respect for you. So how about you say, you know what? Hey, um, Lila, say it's your teenage daughter. Hey, Lila, let's do this. Why don't we clean up our space, clean up our rooms, do a few chores together. I'll crank the music. What do you want to listen to? And then after that, we'll go and we'll go into town and maybe and do a little shopping together or something, or we'll, we'll go to wherever and, and hang out together or leave it at that. There doesn't have to be any reward on the other end. It's like, how about we just clean together? I'll turn the radio on. What music do you want to listen to? You're going to have a greater impact on her, la her lack of defense, but you're still getting the same result, right? You're still going to get the clean bedroom, but you're just setting things up a little bit differently. When I used to teach uh, parenting through greater relationships, and um, I used to have parents that were there, and uh, they would be like, yeah, you know, I just yell at my kids and tell them to go clean their rooms, go do the chores, whatever. What we started doing when the boys were really little and they first moved in is... We started doing chores together. So let's say it was a Saturday morning. It's a beautiful day outside. Our idea, Amy and I, our idea is that we're going to go to the park. And one, one of the things we used to do when the kids were really little is we would go and explore different playgrounds in our neighborhood. And we live in a, a huge um, uh, county. 
and there's lots of schools and lots of playgrounds and whatever. So we would go to a different playground every week. As long as the weather was great, we would go and explore. And if that one was stupid, we'd just drive over here and find another playground to play on for a little while. And one of our routines that we got into was there's, here's the chores that we would do. We would play lots of loud, upbeat music and everything that we liked. And we would turn the radio on or hook up our phone to the stereo or do something. They played loud music. So we'd be vacuuming, doing dishes, doing laundry, cleaning our rooms, um, dusting, cleaning the bathroom. I mean, we did all kinds of things. And I used to have pictures of both of them, you know, Cameron and Brandon making their beds and um, helping put the dishes away and Cameron sweeping the floor and Brandon cleaning the bathroom. And it's just this amazing thing. But we made it this fun routine and now the boys are just equipped that in their minds, this is just what we do. And I used to say, we just love a clean house. We all live here together. We love and value a clean house. And then the other is everybody poops in the toilet. Everybody cleans the toilet. So it was just this really fun way to engage the whole family, create this high energy vibe that was kind of exciting. Now it's a habit for them. They clean up. They clean up their rooms. They clean the bathroom. They have a list of chores. Nobody bats an eye about doing chores. Brandon is 17 and has autism. Cameron is 13-year-old boy and doesn't bat an eye about doing chores. Now, we also have an economy in our house where they earn a certain amount of tickets. They earn 10 tickets per chore, and then those tickets get used throughout the, the different things in the house. Like They have to refill their little shampoo bottles. They have to buy their own little toothpaste. And so it gets them to be thinking about managing their money. It also buys them their tablet time. So now we don't have to be a yes or no as far as tablet time goes. And they buy it and they earn it and they, and they spend their tickets on tablet time. So just like we do, we spend our ticket, we spend our money on bills. We have to pay for the electric, the water, our car payment, uh, credit cards, whatever. But then we also get to use our money for fun things like going to the movies, going out to dinner. And uh, so this is kind of a, a twofold that that's your little parenting, <laughs> that's your little parenting um, education in the middle of this podcast. But we started to set things up in a fun way. How many of you deal with teaching your kids to help you clean up while they're laying around on their phones and playing video games and not helping you clean the house and you're cleaning the house all day? Well, this is what we did. We made it fun. We engaged with them. It, it made a, a deeper connection and taught them a few things because eventually um, they're gonna live in their own place. They should learn how to keep their place clean, okay? So when you kind of sneak up on it, that was my example, you kind of sneak up on, their physical mind was like, I just wanna lay in bed. I just wanna play my tablet. I just wanna watch TV. Well, if we don't instill a new habit, what are we in turn creating? And that can be a little bit scary. And when I look at the world and I look at all the technology that's out and about right now and all these kids that have phones that are just like facing their phone from sunup till sundown, that's creating uh, an ill health in that person. That's my opinion. So it's certainly creating a different, you're not building very deep relationships. I mean, you're looking at a screen of technology where there's no relationships. These kids have like no emotion. And look at look at you and I when we were, five, eight, 12, 15 years old. I mean, I was energized and funny and laughing all the time and talking all the time and playing and using my imagination and I had fun and I had friends and I was laughing and I was engaging with my surroundings. When kids are in technology, look at their faces. When your kids are watching TV, look at their face. When you and I are watching TV, we laugh out loud at things. We, we engage with the TV, watch them. Like, I don't know if your kids are different than my kids, but the engagement is very low. It's just like this zombie face and they're just staring at the screen. So what I'm encouraging is when you see these things, now this going back to you, when we see these things in you, that is like, I am a blank and how I can change it is asking it in a different way that allows you to start changing it without disrupting the physical mind that says, whoa, we are not doing that. Which is why when you are trying to change your money story, and let's say you have $24 in your bank account and you want to change your money story, you can't now just go, okay, I'm rich. Because your, your physical mind is gonna go, no, you're not. And now it's not going to pick up, it's not going to go along with what you're telling it. You're not going to get the, the results that you want. 
And when you do that with like affirmations and mantras, you have to, you have to use it in a subtle way that allows your mind to go, okay, yeah, I'll do that. That sounds okay. That sounds comfortable. It's just when you start a workout program and you normally sleep until noon, you can't tell your mind, we're going to start getting up at four o'clock in the morning and going to the gym across town for an hour. Your mind is going to go, oh, hell no, are we doing that? And you're going to find nothing but serious resistance. But if you were to say, you know what, tomorrow I'm going to get up just 15 minutes earlier and I'm going to go walk on the treadmill. Your mind's going to assess and go, okay, I can get on board with that. And it's going to be a lot easier. The whole point to this kind of change is that we make it as easy and effortless as possible. So now you're using your imagination, you're going through, you're finding this emotion, you're, you're seeing how you would normally respond and react, and now you're going to respond and react a different way. You're gonna say, how can I handle that just a little bit different? Which, that's a key word, using that word with your mind, just a little bit different. How can I handle that just a little bit different so it feels a little bit better and has a greater impact? Oh okay, I think I can get on board with that. And then the mind goes, okay, how could we handle that a little bit different? And I say, all right, well, what about if I were to do it this way? I walk into the kitchen. Remember, it was the mess with the boys. I walk into the kitchen and I see this big, huge, giant mess. Instead of flying off the handle, I just go, hey guys, can you come into the kitchen for a minute? Calm. So there's a little bit of a mess. I was going to come in here and make lunch, but now there's all these dishes and all these crumbs and all this, you know, these food plates all over. Would you mind cleaning up after yourself? So when I come into the kitchen, it's nice and clean and I will do the same for you. I guarantee you they're going to have a way different reaction. So calm, but firm. Now that's for me. Now what I do as I move on to the next step, the next step is visualizing you're now going to visualize that new scenario, acting in a different way. So instead of flying off the handle or calling the kids names or talking down to them or acting like a ding dong, I'm just gonna be like, hey, you know what? Hey guys, when I come into the kitchen, it's really nice to do this and this and have these things in the dishes, whatever, the counters you know, are clean and the, and the stove is clean, at least clean of plates and you know, pots and pans and stuff, I can just start doing what I'm doing because right now I'm really hungry and I'd like to just make lunch but I can't really do that when the kitchen's the way it is any chance we could do this and work this out I'll help you clean we'll get the dub of gaba and then you guys can and I'll do the same for you so I snuck up on it my physical mind can take it on so now I rehearse that now when I set an intention with a lot of emotion accelerated emotion or elevated emotion when I combine a clear intention with elevated emotions I am setting the standard I am setting the bar and the stronger the emotion then what will happen is I will start to pay attention to that thought in my mind I will start paying attention to that visual because I really like that visual now what I'm doing is I am sending my thought and my thinking and my beliefs into the future. When I send my thoughts and my thinking and my beliefs into the future, it now is my spiritual mind saying, yeah, this is what we're going to do and this is where we're going. And then my physical body is on board. Now I've got my conscious and my subconscious, which is my physical body is my subconscious. My conscious mind is like, I want to go in that direction. And my subconscious mind goes, okay. Dude, you are on fire in a good way. That lights up your, your entire life. Take something, for example, that you have been working with, dealing with something in your life back in the past that you have overcome and have become determined and in alignment with, and then you've overcome it and there you are with the success. You've lost 60, 80, 100 pounds. You've acquired a bunch of money. You switched jobs and now you're happier than ever. You got a divorce and you're with somebody else. You had your first baby. You, I don't know what, whatever your thing is. Look back at the process. You got your physical mind on board and you got up every single day in the morning at four o'clock and you went to the gym. Somehow the way that you said it, the way that you structured it, 
You set your intention. I'm sick of being overweight. I'm going to lose this weight. This is how I'm going to do it. And I'm going to sneak up. Now, you didn't know this part, but you snuck up on your mind, on your, your physical mind, your physical body's mind. <laughs> and then you did it. Day after day after day after day, you overcame, 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 overcame the physical body mind. You overcame it. Because remember in the beginning, one of them is going to have the majority of the authority. Which one is it going to be? Is it going to be your spiritual mind that is going to constantly be moving you forward? And you're going to look back at your life and be like, dang, I did all that? I went from poverty to riches. I went from sucky job to amazing job. I went from unhealthy relationship to a beautiful, loving relationship. I went from ill health to optimum health. But we have to sneak up on our minds. That's, that's the hardest part. We have to have our spiritual mind has to have the majority of the authority. The majority of the authority. 70-30, 51-49, something. <laughs> the split has to be where the spiritual mind has just a little bit more. But when you, but when we take what's in our mind, this is really ultimately what I'm teaching you. When you take what's in your mind and you lay it out in front of you, you now bring the unconscious into the conscious, into the conscious. You now bring what is the programming that's running behind the scenes out in front of you to look at it. And you go, do I want this programming to continue running my life? Yes or no? There are things now that are running in my life on autopilot that I 100% love. And then there's things that are running on autopilot that I 100% hate. It is up to me to pull those out in front of me, which is why I start with the beginning, uh, your homework or your uh, exercise in the beginning is to take, you write your name at the top of the sheet, write all those things down that says, hey, what are all the things I identify with? If I am describing my personality, what am I saying? Now, do I see these things as being something I want to keep or not? Do I see them as being permanent or semi-permanent? Can I change them? The answer is yes. Don't ever put no. If it's something that you want to change, then say yes. Okay. So now that you have the emotion, you have the visualization, now it's about continuing to visualize this new way of being. And once we continue to use our will, this is, the, this is a short-term thing, there's another faculty in your mind, is using your will to point in that direction. Because then when I walk into the kitchen, if I have done this activity and I have solidified this in my mind so much with so much emotion that it's amazing and beautiful and ama and just lovely and I just love it and I love this reaction and it deepens my connections and it makes a greater impact on the world. I go into the kitchen and it's a mess. I'm now going to reach for a different tool. I will be less reactionary. I will be yet less angry. My, even my physical being, as I change the belief that says, when I walk into the kitchen, I should be angry, that says now, when I walk into the kitchen, I should be calm and firm. Again, that was mine. That doesn't have to be yours. But when I asked that question, how else can I feel instead of anger, that's what came to me. When you ask that question, instead of being a smoker, what am I? Instead of being angry, what am I? When you ask that question in that way, you get a response that's true to you that's also just a little bit better. And it can sneak up on the, on the mind that way. But now, when I go into the kitchen, because I have placed that in my future self thinking and being and doing, I now start reaching for a different habit. Because when I go into the kitchen in my mind, I can see I can act differently. Does that make sense? I hope that that finds you well. These are going to be the things that we're talking about. Sorry, I think I have the hiccups now. <laughs> the terrible time to get the hiccups. Um, but these are the, going to be the things that we're going to start talking about in our sister circle. And I think it's vital that we start to really understand our words, how we talk, why we say the things that we do, what we do, why we do it, and if we want to change it. So I hope you'll join me. We're going to start if... Um, uh, you go to our lady, our lady Rising group on Facebook. Go to search, type in Lady Rising. 
It's also a link in the show notes here. And um, when you come in through the membership, say you're coming in through the podcast, because I always love to know where my people are coming from. And then when you join a sister circle, this is, this is a community of women where we're going to be talking about this stuff. Because right now, you're, li- you're still listening to this. You're getting this information. You're listening to this information. But you know, you don't have, you can't really ask any questions. So in order to be able to take this to another level of depth, to really integrate this into your being, you need a community of, of support. You need people who you can ask questions to. You maybe even need or want access to me. And I would love for you to have access to me. And there's a couple of ways that you can do it. So our Facebook group and our sister circle are two perfectly uh, amazing groups of support where you can get these questions answered. So I hope this finds you well. I hope that you you do this these few exercises and really start to take the things that are in your programming, that are in your subconscious mind, that are all a part of your physical mind, your physical body's mind, and you can start to shift those things into your spiritual mind. It's an amazing epiphany when it starts happening. And it's an amazing way to start living because then you can take anything, anything that's tucked away in there that you don't like the way that it's showing up in your life or you don't like the way you're reacting to things or that whatever is happening out in the world just doesn't feel very good. It's an amazing way to get significant change in the shortest amount of time and leaving you with a better feeling emotion and making the greatest impact. If you liked this episode and you look forward to future episodes and are really looking for a community to help support you with implementing the tools that we're talking about in this podcast, please consider joining our online sister community called Lady Rising on Facebook, where we focus on that spiritual support and connection, just like in today's episode. I hope you'll join us. Go to Facebook, type in Lady Rising, and tell me you came in through the podcast.